Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. Our objectives are going to be to determine the acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Earth and utilize Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation to determine the gravitational force of attraction between any two objects. So, universal gravitation says that all objects that have mass exert a gravitational pull on each other. The more massive they are, the greater the gravitational pull. And the closer they are, the gra greater the gravitational pull. This is given quantitatively by the equation force of gravity is equal to big G. That's a constant, the universal gravitational constant, equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the first object, the mass of the second object, divided by the square of the distance between them. And keep in mind when we're talking about large objects, we need to measure the distance between the objects from the center of mass of those objects. So if we were looking from the Earth to the Moon, we would have to measure from the center of the Earth to the center of the Moon. That's Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. We can use this to calculate the acceleration due to gravity here on the surface of the Earth. If we use this equation knowing the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms and the radius is 6.38 times 10 to the 6th meters, roughly here on the surface a uh, little bit above sea level, we can use the equation Fg equals big G mass of the Earth times the mass of our object over the square of the distance between them. But we also know that this is equal to ma by Newton's second law. And in this case, our acceleration, a, is the acceleration due to gravity. So that's equal to mg. With a little bit of rearrangement, we can show that little g then must equal big G times the mass of the Earth over the square of the radius of the Earth. Or 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, all divided by the square of the distance between them, this, which in this case is the radius of the Earth, center of the Earth, to the object, 6.38 times 10 to the 6th meters squared. When I plug that into my calculator, I get a value for g of about 9.8 meters per second squared. Note that this is an inverse square relationship. That means that the further the objects are apart, it's a square law relationship as to how that force diminishes. As the objects get closer together, the magnitude of the force goes way up. The further apart they get, it goes down very, very quickly as a square function. Some problem solving hints. Try and substitute values in for variables at the end of the problem only. That will leave you less chances for error in dealing with repeating these large, large numbers. Before using your calculator, try and estimate the order of magnitude of the answer. See if you're in the right ballpark. If you're not, then you probably made a mistake somewhere as you were copying and transposing your numbers. And finally, once your calculations are complete, make sure your answer makes sense by comparing your answer to a known or similar quantity. Again, see if you're remotely in the ballpark of what you should expect. So, question one. What is the gravitational force of attraction between two asteroids in space, each with a mass of 50,000 kilograms separated by a distance of 3,800 meters? We can use Newton's law of universal gravitation to answer this. Fg equals g m1 m2 over r squared. Big G again is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of our first asteroid, 50,000 kilograms, times the mass of our second asteroid, also 50,000 kilograms, divided by the square of the distance between them, 3,800 meters squared. Take your time, plug that into your calculator, and you should come up with an answer for the force of gravity between the two asteroids of roughly 1.15 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. Problem 1, a simple substitution and calculation. 
question two says, as a meteor moves from a distance of 16 Earth radii to a distance of 2 Earth radii from the center of Earth, the magnitude of the gravitational force between the meteor, meteor and Earth becomes, and our choices are 1 eighth as great, 8 times as great, 64 times as great, or 4 times as great. Well, the way I'd figure this out is let's start with our equation. Fg equals g m1 m2 over r squared, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Now, if we're cutting the radius from 16 Earth radii to 2 Earth radii, we're cutting it in eighths, right? So our new equation would be g m1 m2 over 1 eighth of r, and that's squared. Well, 1 eighth of r squared is going to be g m1 m2 over 1 64th r squared, or that's equivalent to 64 times our original g m1 m2 over r squared. Therefore, it must have gotten 64 times greater. Which diagram best represents the gravitational forces, Fg, between a satellite, S, and the Earth? Well, this is really a Newton's third law equation. For every force, there is an equal and opposite force. If the Earth is attracting the satellite with the force of Fg, the satellite must be attracting Earth with the force of Fg. So our answer must be that third diagram. They are attracting each other in equal quantities, equal magnitudes, but opposite directions. Number four, we have two bowling balls, A and B, each having a mass of seven kilograms, placed two meters apart. Find the magnitude of the gravitational force exerted by ball A on ball B. Straightforward Newton's law of universal gravitation problem. We write our equation first, then we substitute in with units, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the first ball, 7 kilograms, the mass of the second ball, 7 kilograms, over the square of the distance between them, 2 meters squared. Very carefully, enter that into my calculator, and I come up with an answer of around 8.17 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. All right, let's take a look at one last problem. A two kilogram object is falling freely near Earth's surface. What is the magnitude of the gravitational force that Earth exerts on the object? Well, the magnitude of the gravitational force that Earth exerts on the object, the gravitational force is also equal to the object's weight, mg. That's another word for weight. Therefore, we could say that this is two kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, or 19.6 newtons. An easy calculation because we're right near the Earth's surface. If we weren't near the Earth's surface, we would have to go back to Newton's law of universal gravitation and some slightly more in-depth calculations. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for your time and have a great day.